Welcome back, 0K fans, to Natalie is at Dawn. I remain your host, Chad, if you're a 333, and this match is going to be, this next match, will be a match between Kingstead and Orphelius on Isle of Grief, which is a fairly popular map, so if you haven't seen it before, I am kind of surprised. But yeah, Kingstead and Orphelius on Isle of Grief. And I, whatever. Anyway... Gonna have... Again, another match with the gunship plant right off the bat. As Orphelius goes for that, and Kingstad goes for the jump bot factory, which makes a lot of sense, though one must bear in mind that you can't actually jump into the water and expect to get out of it again. That doesn't work anymore. It used to, but not anymore. That's no longer the case. So the jump bots have to be somewhat careful going in there. And Blastwing's coming out right off the bat. Coming in from Orphelius. And I'm not sure what Kingstad's LO rating is. They actually don't have one. But I'm curious how they play because I noticed that some of their... Or they apparently have one, but I didn't see any. I'm curious how they play mainly because they seem to have a lot of awards. They're clearly experienced. They know what they're doing to some extent. I just don't know how good they are. And I'm very curious. And I hope they don't mind me casting this. Yeah, Kingstad opening up with... I mean... the. the Okay, the Pyros here should be able to wreck up Orphelius a little bit. Orphelius is getting a Rapier, which... That'll help a bit. Certainly good on them not getting Banshees. Banshees would be a massive mistake. That would just die. Man, it looks like Kingstad just setting up. Getting defenses going. Could use a few defenders. Ah, there we go. That's what they need to do. They know what to do. They got the defenders up in the front. In case any other Blastwings come in or anything else comes in. Which, I mean, Blastwings aren't likely to come in. Normally how it works is the first couple units are Blastwings. After that, nah. After that, it's just Rapiers or Banshees or whatever else. It's usually not Blastwings after that point. So there's not a huge deal there. Yeah, the Pyros, unfortunately, having to deal with quite a lot of resistance inside of Orphelius' base. Oh, so close to getting into the wind generators. If those Pyros had managed to get into the wind generators, that would have been done. That would have been over. But, unfortunately, not able to do so. Kingstad does have the reclaim to work with. They are going to be rebuilding some of their metal extractors. So, that's correct. That, that's the good thing to do. Nothing new coming out of their factories, though. And... Yeah, just so you know, just so everyone knows, everything I cast, except for tournaments, is from replays. I generally don't cast stuff live, because usually it's... Like, honestly, trying to arrange that on a regular basis at least at this point, is not really going to happen. So I just go off replays. Doing stuff live is fun. It's just impractical to arrange consistently. Back to the game, though. Kingstad with a bit of a setup for expansion at this point. At the, I mean, at the same time, Orphilius is over in the southeast side of the map. It does have a Stardust planned, which is... Oh, nice. Stardust with the... Which, okay, it's kind of funny because, yeah, a Stardust would be great for this sort of thing. However, they're fighting jump bots, so that's all well and good. But if Kingstad's aware of this through any means, they can just jump over this solar plant, avoid the Stardust entirely, be behind the solar plants relative to the Stardust. The Stardust would barely be able to hit them and then deal with all the metal extractors. They can't go through the water, true, but... Or at least they can't get really out of the water. But... They can get past this this Stardust here. So the Solar Plants are actually going to be a bit of a disadvantage, given that Kingstad is going for Jump Bots, if Kingstad goes for it. Kingstad at this point, however, not too focused on raiding, much more focused on air defense. And yeah, that that's the correct move. <laughs> they, are, they are wise to focus on air defense, as Orphelia is coming in with Rapiers over to the western side of the map. I mean, Orphelius isn't playing hyper-aggressive. They're expanding. They're getting themselves set up. They're not really trying to break anything too heavily. But they are going to be attacking from behind. Looks like part of it is for raiding, though. I think they expect Kingstad to have built up over to the northwest. And over in this little submerged area to the slightly less northwest. They haven't, though. Kingstad basically focused entirely on setting up in the eastern side of the map. At this point, though, the Rapier is not finding anything. Kingstad, are you aware of this? You are not aware of this, actually. Oops. Looks like just barely those Rapiers managed to evade detection. So Kingstad, not really aware that Orphelius was scouting around trying to figure out where Kingstad is. So Kingstad doesn't know that Orphelius knows that Kingstad's not over to the northwest yet. 
That is not something Kingstad's aware of. So Orphilius right now in a pretty strong position information-wise. They know that Kingstad's likely only expanded to the eastern side of the map. And they know that Kingstad's probably gonna be expanding a little bit over, well, further southeast. And at this point, Orphilius doesn't seem to be taking advantage of that. In fact, they're building up over to the southwest as far away as possible from the looks of it. Eh, yeah, so Orphelia's pointing out they should have probably built some blast wings to scout out Kingstad's base, and that wouldn't have been a bad idea. I mean, you know, blast wings are cheap. But Kingstad at this point is so well defended, I don't think the blast wings would have gotten even close. Though, for the purposes of scouting this area here to figure out what's going on, wouldn't have been a bad idea. Wouldn't have been an expensive idea. The rapiers at this point aren't so far out of position that they're going to be losing anything right now. Although, the pyro's going to be coming in. The thing is, this pyro... I don't think Kingstad's going to go for the jump strategy. I don't think they're, it doesn't look like they're going to even go for the southeast at all. They're going for the slightly less southeast. They're going for the center south expansion, and they're going to find nothing. If they went for the southeast, they'd probably lose a pyro or two trying to deal with the Stardust. I don't think they'd... They don't know that it's there. I don't know if they think to jump over this solar plant in order to get there. And it looks like Orphelius does have a couple defenders just in case that does happen. But... Yeah, I don't see that happening. Kingstad's probably going to be focusing far more on dealing with the main base. They don't seem to be particularly keen on dealing with the expansions to the side. They're focusing on building the main... Dealing with the main base, killing off the other stuff. They need to get some caretakers here or something. They have no other factories and they're accessing metal. And they've got a roach to deal with. Fun! Two roaches, actually. Orphelius... Getting quite defensive with the shield bot factor, or the shield bots here. Kingstead doesn't seem to be aware that there's a possibility of roaches, and ooh, good thing for them. The pyros happened to see it. The roach moved a little bit too soon, but this roach is going to be far luckier. There's those pyros dead. That's what a roach does best. We were missing that in the previous games or in the Red Comet game. That's we we wanted to see some roaches before. There's the roaches. There's our roach explosions, and the fire from the pyros that soon follows. So now it's Kingstad aware that there's a shield bot factory, and that's the main investment of money for Orphelius. It doesn't appear that there's any major change in strategy. Kingstad continuing along with the Archangels, not going for anything else, like Jax, or a bunch of Pyros, or, well, Moderators, I guess. Now I wouldn't go for Moderators. I don't know, Thugs? Yeah, Moderators would be really good against Thugs. But no, no, nothing. Absolutely nothing. I mean, the Archangel is still not a bad idea to have, because... Well, this. Actually, where's... The, oh, right, the other Archangel went Archangel went in. Because Kingstad thought it would be worth it, and really it wasn't a bad idea. In case Air Support came in, but one Archangel apparently is not enough. No, Kingstad very focused on the anti-air. I think they either aren't thinking of the fact that Orphelius is getting a strong ground army, or they're thinking Orphelius is going to switch back to air, so I should still get anti-air. Because the trick is going to be that Orphelius has built just enough ground to convince me to switch off anti-air, and then it's going to go back to air and break me when I have no anti-air. So I'm just going to get more anti-air. Which would be a reasonable enough strategy if there was enough money going into the factory for that to actually be worthwhile, but there isn't. And apparently that's no longer the strategy anyway. But yeah, that's the thing. It's like, why are you doing that? Also, what is the... Gah. What is the commander going for here? This is armor. Armor and, machine, armor and machine gun. But yeah, so... Uh, you need caretakers. You need... You need a freaker or constable around here to actually build stuff up here. I'm not sure. I think Kingstad is a team's player. Just judging by the way they're playing, they're focusing entirely on one lane. They aren't expanding over to the entire side of their, the, their entire side of the map. They're focusing on half of it or so. They're not really building up caretakers, which I'm not sure that's a team games thing, because normally in team games I see people, like, just massively assisting or assist building everything. So, that's the thing. Kingstad trying to spend most of their money on defenses and commanders, but... I mean, if they built up their commander again, that would at least use up quite a bit of the money. But they aren't even doing that so much. Like, the commander could be upgraded right now. They 
that's something they can do to spend the money. It's not the ideal thing to do, but they have nothing in their main base to actually build anything up. They have nothing near a factory to build anything up. No assists, no caretakers, no constables near their factory. Actually, no constables at all. Oh, there's one. Never mind. None near the factory, none being produced. There are some eventually, but that won't be here for another couple minutes. So, yeah, at this point, the factory is kind of not really doing anything. Nowhere near as much as it could. This is what I mean. The anti-air strategy, maintaining anti-air presence just so that Orphelius cannot go back to air. Just to keep Orphelius honest. That's a great idea. It just only works when you actually have the production capacity to make it work. And at this point, Kingstad unfortunately doesn't. They have the money, they just don't have the build power. And admittedly, they will need to get more metal later on, because they will actually run out of the money. But at this point, they have tons in reserve. They could easily, for at least a minute, have roughly equivalent build power to Orphelius. Although, for that matter, how much build power has 30 in that factory? Yeah, roughly equivalent. A little less, but still. They could use that build power, but they haven't. They don't have anything in their main base to use that build power. They have loads of static defenses, which is another thing that's typical in team play. Does not work super well in 1v1. And especially not a line of lotuses like this. I mean, it is stopping the Felon from doing a huge amount of damage, but the Thugs are the main workhorse here. I mean, I bring up Moderators because the slow beam damages the shields heavily. Like, relative to the amount of damage that's generally dealt, it deals an extra 200 damage to shields. Just because of the slow beam. I mean, Constables deal damage to shields because of their slow beam. That's the thing that you gotta remember, is that slow and... slow EMP disarm... They all deal a third of their status damage as direct damage to shields. So if you hit something with a 600 damage slow beam, it'll deal 200 damage to shields. And that is extremely handy. However, Kingstead about to lose the commander, and with that, all the storage that they could possibly have used to get their economy back on track, or get their construction back on track, as they were trying to get a constable, well, they almost had constables up. They do have a few but using them entirely for static defenses rather than trying to build up a larger army. And at this point, they have no money left. There's just nothing. They have no economy left. That stored metal was pretty much the only thing they had going for them. Metal and energy. That was about the only thing they had going for them if they wanted to rebuild. Get up a few constables, build up a fairly large ground army to deal with this stuff. A few moderators, a few pyros, a few jacks. Just deal with this as best as possible. Maybe a scuttle? I don't really see scuttle. Now, get a few units like that. Deal with this whole thing. Get it more territory as well. Like, get this northwest side here, which is totally open. And then use that to build up a larger setup economically. And then a larger setup militarily. And then get back into the game. But not happening in this case, I'm afraid. So that's... That's how it goes. At this point, though, it was... Yeah, a lot of it was excess. A lot of it was excess, a lot of it was not using the metal that was produced. And not getting enough metal either, but mainly just not using the metal that they had. They had a lot of metal. A lot of it was excessed. None of it really helped. Anyway, that was that. So I guess we know what King says play styles like more team oriented a bit less a bit more old school as well the defenses are i mean orphelius is pointing out that's a bit of a total annihilation strategy and fair enough and yeah looking at their last battles they are they are 2v2 2v2 3v3 small teams player that's that's their style So I can see that. I mean, I definitely see that the way they were playing, it didn't seem like large teams, because they did take half the map. But that's what I was thinking, 2v2. They were expecting to have a teammate with them, and they didn't quite have it. Maybe Orphelia scared them out from expanding, but I don't know. The way they were expanding just looked like they expected to have a teammate there to take the western side of the map, and they would take the eastern side of the map, and that would be it. But I wanted to be fair to them, so I'm going to cast another game with them, since I am still curious how they're going to play against North Chilean G. Orphelius is a very terrifyingly strong player. North Chilean G is a few hundred elos, elons lower in rated skill. So maybe that'll work a bit better. Maybe we'll see a match that's a bit more even, or at least gets us to see a different side of Kingstead. So, 
We'll be back with that in a couple minutes. Stay tuned. <laughs> 